Today we're continuing our Yoga for Gratitude series with a class on gratitude and mindfulness. Hello and welcome to episode 286 of Namaste Yoga. Today we are in Oak Bay beside Boker Creek on Canada Day we are filming. <laughs> and I decided to wear a nice red long sleeve top with a dancing shiv um, because it's Canada Day but it's quite warm here so I'm probably going to be stripping down to underneath where I have a bamboo um, dancing Ganesh on underneath because it's already warm here <laughs> and it's funny because we're experiencing a bit of a heat wave here on the west coast so even here in Victoria it's hot <laughs> and I also have on capri um, gray leggings today with the triple goddess symbol on them and so thanks to squeeze yoga clothing for my clothes I super appreciate it, Donna. I just sent off a gift certificate to Michelle, who runs our membership community this morning, because she does. She doesn't run our membership community. I run our membership community. She runs the meditation section of our membership community. And so, to express my gratitude to her for doing that section of our community, I sent her a gift certificate for some squeeze clothing. She said she was going to get a um, some bamboo tops and some capri pants as well because she's she's not very tall <laughs> so she likes capri pants uh, but when I did that Donna was asking me if I needed um, to refresh my wardrobe at all I don't I don't need to refresh my wardrobe she gives me loads of clothes <laughs> so <laughs> I think I'm good but I don't know maybe you need to refresh your wardrobe um, and also thanks to Dusky Leaf for our my props Dusky Leaf gives me some great props for on the show so today you will need, um, you may need a block, you'll need your mat, and you may need a bolster. I think that's all you'll need. So we have a testimonial today from one of our new members. She's just lovely. Um, it's a speak pipe testimonial. Well, hi, Melissa. I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciate your classes. Sometimes I feel like I can't say it uh, in you know, by writing it and uh, I just did your arthritis class I do have rheumatoid arthritis it's BJ here Barbara Jane and it's just wonderful you have completely helped me get back on track and that means so much to me it's actually very emotional because I was really really struggling and I've been able to discipline myself along with you and I'm doing the classes every day and I just wanted to let you know personally how much it means to me that you have been there at a time where I could not help myself. But as a result of you being there, I can help myself because I have instructions to follow. Your personality is beautiful and I appreciate everything that you do. Thank you so much. Lots of love. Thank you, BJ, for leaving such a wonderful comment. And as BJ said, SpeakPipe is a great way to leave comments, uh, especially if, you know, sometimes it can take a long time to type up a message. And I know that Tim uses the voice recognition software on his phone all the time to respond to messages. And so this is just a great way that you can leave a quick message. And um, if you enjoy the if you have arthritis like BJ, then we have the arthritis classes in our shop. And also if you're a member, they're part of the membership community. And BJ, as I said, is one of our members who's become super involved in our membership community and we really enjoy her participation in our community. And you can, she's also an incredible artist. I am just in love with all her art. She's in Australia, so I'm, I keep asking her how, you know, 
she hasn't told me yet where her her shop is for her art <laughs> but I'm hmm her studio I know I want to fly down there <laughs> and find her art but anyway you can find her on Instagram that's the only way I've been able to connect with her art so far but let me tell you how you go can go look at her art it's BJ Long, B E E J A Y L O N G. So go, everybody needs to go follow her on Instagram and, and look at her beautiful art. Okay, so let's get started with our class today. Uh, today is gratitude and mindfulness. So just take a moment before we lie down and get started with our physical practice. T close your eyes, take a deep breath in, exhale through your mouth. And close out all the distractions from your external environment. Turn inward and check in. And if you were to assess how grateful you're feeling on a scale of 1 to 10 right now, just notice how grateful you're feeling. At the beginning of this yoga class. And then from here, we're going to lie down. And we're going to do a short little practice here to clear your mind. So you're just going to take your hands and place them at the base of your skull, at the occipital ridge, at the base of your skull. And you're going to run your fingers up through your hair. And we're going to just do this to clear your mind. So set the intention to clear your mind here. After you checked in with your baseline for gratitude for beginning. I'm personally, I'm incredibly, I started off incredibly grateful. I'm so grateful for all of you for watching. For all of you who leave comments on our show. For all of you who are members in our community. Support us by being members in our community. And for all of you who support us with your donations. I'm just feeling incredibly grateful for all the support we have right now. I'm incredibly grateful to be filming outside today on a gorgeous warm day. And to have the support of my husband here, to be able to work with him every single day, to have his support. Pretty great life. So 10 tigers running through the forest to clear your mind here. And then we're gonna do some neck and shoulder releasing. So just bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor. This will create a little bit more slack in your upper body. And keep your hands down by the side of your body to begin, inhale in the center. Exhale, roll your head to one side. Breathe in in the center. Breathe out, roll your head to the other side. Breathe in center. Breathe out, roll your head to one side. Breathe in center. Breathe out, roll your head to the other side. I'm also incredibly grateful to live in not only this amazing country that we live in, but also to live in, I think, the best place in this entire country. <laughs> I love this city, this island we live on, and I love the city we live in. Like right now, I, I just feel like I'm surrounded by my people here. Right now, as I'm rolling my head from side to side, I can look across Boker Creek and I can see a man using the chains to stretch out his, I'm not exactly sure what he's stretching, but he's using them to stretch. <laughs> and everywhere we go, we see people moving here. Tim and I always joke whenever we're out and about, we wish people would get out and, and move more here and enjoy the outdoors more because it's just 
people here really are out and about all the time, enjoying and moving in, in so many different ways. Hmm? Okay, so now we're going to add on and then so you're going to exhale, roll your head to the right and slide your right shoulder down and then inhale, roll your head back center, your shoulder will come back up to where it was and then exhale, roll your left ear down and glide your left shoulder down, inhale back center. So you're going to glide, roll your ear to the right, glide your right shoulder down, inhale, glide it back up, exhale, roll your left shoulder, your ear to the left, glide your left shoulder down. We'll just go side to side like that with your palms up. And the thing that Tim was saying was that people work to live here. They don't live to work. So we can go to a shop and there'll be a sign on the door that says, we're closed so that we can have a holiday for two weeks with our staff. <laughs> so it's not unusual for shops or restaurants to be closed for two weeks while everybody goes on summer holiday. And then come back to center and take your arms straight into the air. Just lift them up and create tension in your shoulders and then sink them back down. So your shoulders are really heavy on the ground and then hold on to your elbows again. Let's do that again. Inhale, lift your shoulders up and feel that tension in your shoulders and then let it all go so that your shoulders are resting on the ground. Inhale here in the center. Exhale, roll your head in elbows to one side, inhale in the center, exhale roll your head and elbows over to the other side, inhale center and exhale roll. And then come to the center, leave your head in the center and breathe out, just take your elbows to one side, breathe in center, breathe out, take your elbows to the other side. And try and keep your elbows directly over your shoulders, I'm noticing mine are lowering down.
And then roll your head and elbows in the opposite direction. Breathe in center, breathe out lower. A wonderful release for your shoulders and your neck, range of motion in your shoulders and your neck. Then breathe in back center and let that all go. Just check in with your shoulders and your neck now. And take a moment to pause. And when you take that moment to pause, it's a moment of conscious awareness and reflection that allows you to have that moment to be grateful. So maybe it's gratitude for a longer neck, more relaxed shoulders or something else. Maybe a moment to be grateful to be able to take a deeper breath. And then when you're ready, you can roll to your side and come up onto all fours. And from all fours, you're going to slide your right leg forward and reach your left leg back and long. And you're going to fold forward over your bent right leg for Ikpad Rajkopatasan, Pigeon Pose to stretch out your right hip here. And then take your hands underneath your shoulders and you're going to inhale lift your heart so you're bending backwards and then exhale and lower back down so just a little bit of spinal warm-ups here inhale lift your heart bend backwards and exhale lower down elbows point straight back inhale lift your heart bend backwards exhale and lower down Inhale, lift your heart and bend backwards. Exhale, lower down. And then tuck your right toes under, lift your knee, inhale, lift up. So you're getting a stretch in the front of your left hip as well. Take your left hand to the outside of your right leg. So you're getting a twist in your spine as well. And then come back to the center, uncurl your right toes, lower your knee, press back. And this time you'll slide your left knee forward to your left wrist, reach your right leg back and long. Lift up tall and fold forward over your bent left leg to stretch out your left hip. And then take your hands under your shoulders. You're going to 
Inhale, lift up, lift your heart up. And we're gonna do the spinal flexions again. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift your heart up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift your heart up. Feeling this deep into your psoas as well. Exhale, lower down. Which runs all the way along here. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down. And then tuck your right toes under. Press through your right heel, lift your right knee. And then inhale, lift up again. Feel that opening up through the front of your right hip even more. And then we're also going to add a twist to that. Take your right hand to the outside of your left knee. And then come back to the center. I think I put my mat down on an ant hill because there's loads of ants here today. And you're gonna come to a comfortable seated position. I'm personally gonna use my blocks for this because it's just a weird hill here. Okay, so you can sit kneeling on your block. It's nice support. You could sit cross-legged on a meditation cushion or you can sit in a chair, whatever works best for you and your body today. Today we're going to use the Anjali Mudra, which is probably one of the best known mudras. It's a really nice one to center you in your heart and bring you back to gratitude. It's just hands in prayer position at your heart center, thumbs resting at your, at your breastbone. Okay, so find your sit bones, draw your shoulders back over your hips, your ears over your shoulders, close your eyes for that internal, internal inward focus. Take a deep breath in. Exhale and prepare to receive the teachings for today. There's an interesting correlation between gratitude and mindfulness. Martin Heidegger says, thinking is thinking. Gratitude requires some exploration of your life to see where thanks should be given. Robert A. Emmons, a PhD who does an extensive, a, a, a lot of research on gratitude, describes gratitude as a two-stage process. First, you must acknowledge the goodness in your life. And then secondly, you must recognize that the goodness lies at least partially outside of yourself. So you can't, it can't be, you can't be a narcissist and be grateful, I guess. Um, so either with other people, a higher power, animals or nature, um, you will find something to be grateful for. So I never really thought of it that way, actually, until he, he, he brought it up that way and actually I, I kind of disagree with them too because <laughs> maybe I'm a narcissist but I, I actually think that I, I, I think it's because we're yogis too and maybe I'm lumping all you in this too but I think as yogis we spend a lot of time cultivating gratitude for our higher selves and also for our bodies and our breath and so I think that there is that you can spend a lot of time practicing gratitude for what happens internally as well. So I didn't quite agree with him 100% on that. I think it's kind of the difference between spiritually focused being external versus internal as well. So mindfulness is the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something. To experience gratitude, there must be an intellectual level of recognition. Then there has to be the act of acknowledging that recognition. To, to, to me, this is an act of mindfulness that goes hand in hand with yoga. It's something that we practice regularly and consistently, especially here in Namaste Yoga. As yogis, we are seasoned practitioners when it comes to awareness. We know how to bring our attention to our breath, 
our bodies, sensations in our bodies, and we know how to think about what's happening in our present moment experience in a way that might be different from our day-to-day -day reality where we're reacting to what's happening outside of us. In this way, we are very much ready to practice gratitude. We're ready to open to the contemplation and reflection that gratitude requires of us. So why would we want to practice gratitude? Robert Eamon's PhD research, his, well, he's a PhD and his research shows that those who practice gratitude report feeling more loving, more forgiving, joyful, and enthusiastic. And conversely, a lack of gratitude le leads to shrinking sense of self, more anger, resentment, env envy, and bitterness. Research shows that people who experience gratitude are more effective at dealing with everyday stress, recover from illness more quickly, and benefit from greater health. So today, we are going to practice gathering our attention towards mindfulness and extending that mindfulness towards gratitude. Okay, so go ahead and form your intention for how you would like to proceed in your yoga class today, what these teachings mean to you and what it is you'd like to create, sustain, release, let go of a rebirth in your life right now. And then once you form your intention, you can begin to make your way into Adho Mukhswanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Now, I'm going to give you some options for Downward Facing Dog because with I have frozen shoulder still. I'm my frozen shoulder is thawing <laughs> more and more every day. So this isn't a pose that I can do very well right now, but I've come up with some great modifications because of that. So the way you come into Adho Mukhswanasana is you tuck your toes under, you inhale, you exhale, and then you reach your hips up towards the ceiling. Straighten out your legs. It's actually coming a lot better. Some options are to come from your knees, reach your hips out towards the ceiling. That's a nice stretch for your spine. So kind of more like puppy. And then meet me back down kneeling and you're going to place both of your hands on the floor in front of you we're going to do some bowing um, the more I think about it the more I think your how your gratitude can be internally focused and how a pitfall of gratitude can be if it is externally focused all the time then it has to kind of be driven by other people and almost uh, gets to be driven by a consumer culture too. It has to come externally. But if it's really built up internally, then it doesn't rely on external stimulus. So I think that can be kind of the difference between almost uh, Western, Eastern cultures, religions, uh, mindsets as well too perhaps I don't know let me know leave your leave your comments below about that because I'm seeing how much uh, our yoga practice is very internally driven in terms of gratitude so you're gonna place your hands on the ground beside you and this is a really beautiful practice to cultivate humility and to realize your value as a person so what you're going to do is you're going to bow your third eye point to the floor. You're going to touch your forehead to the ground each time. It's nice, long, slow, deep breaths. You're going to move slowly so as not to get yourself dizzy, especially if you have low blood pressure. Your buttock stays on your heel. You're going to breathe out as you come down and breathe in as you come up. And can you time us for three minutes, Tim? So breathe out, lower down. Breathe in and come up. 
Breathe out, lower down. Breathe and lift up. And the reason why I chose this today is because it's said to awaken the subtlety in us. And if we're cultivating mindfulness, mindfulness for gratitude, then we need that level of subtlety to be able to recognize things in our lives, the things within us that we want to be grateful for. As you lower down, breathe out. Inhale as you come up. You can silently say the word sat to yourself. As you lower down, you're going to say nom. Inhale up sat. Exhale down nom. And those words, they're from Kundalini Yoga, means uh, I basically translates to the truth of who I am. So you're honoring the truth of who you are bowing to the truth of your divine nature this gently flexes your spine it loosens your neck muscles it engages your legs and arm muscles bowing honors yourself and the divine within as an act of humility not humiliation, but as a way to cultivate an attitude of humbleness. And humility means understanding that you are a worthwhile and valuable person who is part of the greater whole. So it's in gratitude and awe and wonder that we bow. Bowing reminds us of our place in the whole vastness of creation. So inhale up and then you can release. Okay, so Gurmukh and who I learned this uh, Kriya from suggests that you could do this practice as a 40 day practice. Do it for 40 days and see how it changes your life. She suggests it as an antidote to depression. And I think that would be a beautiful practice to do for 40 days and see how it changes your life. I mean, it's amazing to to bow with humility like that and to recognize your own wonder. I mean, we just moved in front of this gorgeous um, memorial rock. I love these. I love reading these <laughs> wherever I go. And this one is in memory of Linda Bocking, and it says, Kind mother, good friend, and gentle person. Can you imagine having something so beautiful written about yourself on a memorial plaque just just beautiful you're always in our hearts so i just think that's gorgeous everywhere we go i am always reading the benches and I, one of my favorite things to do is to walk through cemeteries and read the all the tombstones so just beautiful okay so i i think that's beautiful i think i'm probably going to commit that to my practice for the next 40 days love doing things like that Okay, we're going to come up to standing now. We have another Kriya to stimulate your, your pineal gland for intuition and wisdom now. Okay, so the last one was quite gentle. This one's more vigorous. It involves more vigorous breathing. You're going to take your arms out parallel to the ground with hitchhiker's thumbs. And you're going to inhale, bring your hands in, and you say sat as you come in. And then you exhale, you say nam as they go out. And Tim's going to time us for two minutes. <laughs> and it'll be... <laughs> and you're going to imagine that this arm looks like this arm, okay? <laughs> okay, here we go. Thank you. 
and your thumbs aren't actually supposed to touch your shoulders. Inhale, saw, exhale, nom. Inhale, and exhale, lower down. Good. Okay, so it's supposed to stimulate your pituitary gland for intuition and clarity, and this will help you understand the law of cause and effect. And so I chose it because if you have that ability to take the time to cultivate mindfulness and conscious awareness of your surroundings and what's happening in your body and what's happening in your life, then you will notice all the things that you can be grateful for. Okay, let's do eagle pose to develop that third eye for awareness a little bit more. So you're going to stand on your right foot, sink down through your, bend your right knee, cross your left leg over, place your toes on the ground, or you can lift your foot, or you can hook your leg. Then bring your right arm up and hook your left arm underneath it. You can either bring your palms together, bring the backs of your palms together, or even hook your arms. And then go ahead and let that out of your body and we'll build it on the other side as well. So stand on your left foot, bend your left knee, cross your right leg over, place your foot either on the ground, on the outside of your left leg, or you can hook your foot all the way around. Bring your left arm up, hook your right arm underneath it, either backs of the hands together, you can actually bring your palms together, backs of the hands together, or hook your arms. And then go ahead and let that out of your body. And we're gonna come down and do some rabbit pose for continuing with that attitude of humility and reverence and awe so we can continue to cultivate that attitude. So come down onto all fours. This one, you need to be careful if you have any neck issues. You might wanna sit it out. Uh, you could do, you could, come forward without putting your top of your head on the ground. Just do it in child's pose like this. 
Um, otherwise, you can. The way I like to come into it is from all fours and place the crown of my head on the ground. You can also put a folded blanket underneath your head if you're not outside like me where the ground is nice and soft. And then what you're going to do is gently interlace your fingers behind your head and then lift your rabbit arms. And then slowly lower down. And we're going to stretch out your neck the other way. I'm going to show the modification first and then the full expression of the pose. I'm going to show the modification with blocks. And I'm going to get you to have your bolster close by too because we're going to use the bolster right after for the next pose. Look at how organized I'm getting. <laughs> Don't you appreciate that? Okay, so for this one, you're gonna have, for the modified version of the pose, you're gonna have one block tall, one block, block long. And then you're gonna lie down on the blocks so that the lower block is at the base of your ribs and the higher block is under your head. And take your arms out to the side like that. And you can rest here. So some people don't like uh, this pose, fish pose, matsyasana, because uh, they don't like the pressure on top of their head. They don't like the extension in their neck. So this is a nice modification for it. Okay, so for the other expression of this pose, I will show you. You're gonna lie on your back, tuck your palms underneath you so that you're arms are reaching down your legs and then you're going to press into your elbows lift your chest and rest on top of your head so i chose this one because it really opens up your throat chakra and for gratitude there has to be that acknowledgement of the gratitude there has to be that whether there has to be some expression of the gratitude it can't it has to be acknowledged in some way. So that's the opening of your throat chakra here. And then press into your elbows and slowly lower down. And from here, this is where you're going to use your bolster. Take your bolster and place it on the left side of your body so that the top of the bolster lines up with your hip. Take your arms out into a soft T. Bend your right knee. Press into your right foot. Tuck your left hip under and then take your leg and place it up on the bolster so that your body's in a twist you can lift your breastbone up towards the ceiling reaching your left arm out a little bit more look over your right shoulder
And then roll back onto your back, press into your right foot, untuck your left hip. Lengthen out your leg and allow your body to unravel. Take your bolster, you can just roll it over onto your other side. And then bend your left leg. Press into your left foot. Tuck your right hip under and take your leg up onto the bolster. And then make sure you look over your left shoulder. You can even turn your breastbone up towards the ceiling a little bit more and reach your right arm out a little bit more. Increase the twist. Okay, and then we'll come back to the center and press into your left foot, untuck your hips, lengthen everything out, give your spine a chance to unravel. And then we're going to make our way up to seated for one last meditation to appreciate the beauty, the bliss, the bounty of your life, the abundance of your life. And I'm just going to get Tim to bring me a little drink of water before that. Okay, so you may want to wet your whistle too because this is a spoken mantra, so if your voice is dry, it might want a little refreshing. Although you didn't just spend the last hour speaking, so <laughs> you're probably better off than me. I'm going to need to sit up on something. You may need to as well. <laughs> this is a downward slope here. <laughs> so great filming outside. And, and then you get to see how flat your surfaces are inside. This is the an, a variation on the bountiful, blissful, beautiful meditation that's so gorgeous in Kundalini practice. There's a few different ones. This is one of them. You're going to sit in easy pose. You can sit in a chair also for this one. In your left hand, you'll have the Gyan Mudra. Thumb and index finger together, palms turned up and rested on your left lap where you can relax your elbow and your shoulder. And then your right arm is going to be up at a 60 degree angle. And then you're going to say these words. I am the light of my soul, I am bountiful, I am beautiful, I am bliss, I am, I am. And the I am, I am is said to eradicate the ego, it merges, the ego merges into the universal identity. So this meditation builds, <laughs> I'm grateful for my new Kindle. <laughs> which has touch screen, so when you touch the screen, it goes to the next page. Um, this meditation builds self-esteem, self-respect, and self-honoring. And I believe the more we do this, the more we can appreciate ourselves, and the more we appreciate ourselves, the more we have self-love, the more we can have love for others, too. So, Okay, so I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. And that merges us with universal identity, universal love, connects us with 
all things. This reminds me of yesterday. <laughs> when we, were, we were having a picnic dinner outside and there was another woman in the park and Tim and Trinity were saying she was connected with all things because she was stopping and waving to all the birds and talking to all the birds. <laughs> yep. She was connected with all of nature. We live in a wonderful place. Here we go. Um, we're going to do this for three minutes, Tim. Here we go. Breath in. Exhale. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am blissful. I am beautiful. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am blissful. I am beautiful. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am blissful. I am beautiful. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. I am the light of my soul. I am bountiful. I am beautiful. I am bliss. I am. I am. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Feel the effects of this practice for you. And then you can go ahead and rest back into Shavasana. And as you lie back into Shavasana, take a moment to take a deep breath in here and let it fall out of your mouth. Taking that moment for awareness to cultivate mindfulness and check in with 
how grateful you're feeling now at the end of class and notice if that's shifted or changed at all from the beginning of class. And you're going to stay here, resting back. I'm going to sit up and read a poem for you. So this poem is called So Many Gifts by Hafiz. Please forgive Hafiz and the friend if we break into sweet laughter. When your heart complains of being thirsty, when ages ago every cell in your soul capsized forever into this infinite golden sea. So just take an extra moment here to reflect mindfully and take that extra moment to notice what you're grateful for right now. As we continue our ascending journey in this Yoga for Gratitude series, Then gradually allow your breath to deepen. Slowly wiggle and stretch out. Bend your knees and roll to your right side. Take a breath there. Take a moment to be grateful for every new beginning that happens at the end of every single yoga class. You get to start new. It's a rebirth every single time. And slowly make your way up to seated. So thank you so much for joining us for episode number 286 of Namaste Yoga. If you like the show, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and leave your comments below. You could even share it with a friend or a family member or a coworker, somebody who you like, knows, likes to express gratitude, somebody who you're thankful for in their, in their life. This could be a way, you know, I know one of the things that is supposed to be amazing for taking that moment to express gratitude mindfully is to write somebody a gratitude letter. So you could send them a gratitude letter and say, I did this yoga class and it made me want to take a time to tell me tell you how much I appreciated you in my life and what you've meant to me in my life so and then you could send them this class <laughs> so uh, leave your comments below this week let me know what has your mindfulness of gratitude allowed you to open to appreciate that was different than before so by taking that extra step of mindfulness of taking that pause that moment to bring awareness and cultivate mindfulness, what have you noticed that's different than before? So you can show your appreciation for this series, this ascending journey uh, into gratitude by leaving your comments or also you can make a donation here. And I want to thank this week Linda Caldwell for your donation. She's been a long time monthly donator and also to Ronicky Luke for your donations this week. I appreciate your support of Namaste Yoga and as our family does as well. Tim, Trinity and I super appreciate your support um, as we all work together to bring these classes to you. And if you would like more support for your personal practice, then one thing that our members are going super bonkers crazy for is a four week sadhana that I just put together for our members on anxiety and anti-anxiety challenge. And what we're doing is over the next four weeks, we're doing every single day, it's seven days a week. There are seven different yoga classes that we're repeating the same practice Monday to s Sunday, the same, over the next four weeks with a different focus each week. And the idea is that we're checking in before and after each day in the practice to see how the practices have lowered the anxiety level. They're all practices to help to lower anxiety. And it's been amazing to see how the classes are lowering their anxiety daily but then even from week one to week two it's been amazing to see how they're finding more ease in their bodies how they're finding the practices are easier so uh, it's been really amazing 
And also we just released 11 new videos into our membership community to help people with the connective tissue practices with the fascia. So if you've been curious about fascia, it's kind of the hottest new thing in the movement industry. Uh, we just put together loads of videos to answer questions about it, particularly if you have any chronic illnesses, uh, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, if you're on any medications, and uh, we put together a six-week plan for you to slowly introduce the practices. And we also put together a six-week plan for people who are healthy to make sure that you're moving the practices through every single part of your body so that you're not, you know, just getting stuck on your favorite practice if you like to release your upper back all the time so that you're moving it, you know, you're doing your feet, your hands, your spine, your upper back, your lower back, your legs, you, that you've got your whole body covered. So that was something else we added new this week as well. So we'd love to have you as a member of our member of our community and you can sign up right here below for that as well thanks so much for joining us today and we'll see you next week i'm sending you much love from beautiful british columbia on canada day may your joy be as deep as our pacific ocean may you be as strong as our mountains and may you be as rooted as these gorgeous trees i wanted to finish our class here because look at this big gorgeous tree <laughs> may you be as rooted as the trees that are everywhere here not just in our forest om shanti namaste melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts please leave your comments below the video thank you for your reviews on itunes and youtube your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com, and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.